This is a video I need to make in response to several tutorials out there that focus on fixes for getting Quake 3 Arena to work on modern systems. Some of these problems include the game being way too dark, input lag, that sort of thing. But often these tutorials seem to be made by people that either can't see or don't care how much worse the game looks after these so-called fixes are implemented. To correct these problems, we'll need to type in certain command lines in the game's command console that appears when you press the tilde key on the keyboard. You know, that weird thing you press next to the one key. I'll have all these commands listed in the video's description below. When you type them in the command console, every one of them has to start with a backslash. Before I get into the fixes, I want to point out that this is an unmodified version of Quake 3 Arena that only has the official 1.32 patch applied, so no mods. Let's start with the first mistake that many people make. Mistake number one, ignoring gamma settings and changes to texture brightness. One of the bugs that Quake 3 suffers from when running certain modern GPU drivers is that not only the game is darker than it should be, but the built-in brightness slider also spazzes out when you try to move it past 50%. Some like to use the command r underscore ignore hw gamma set to 1, which enables the command whilst 0 disables it. This does indeed make the game brighter, but this is akin to burning down the barn just to get rid of a rat infestation. All that this command does is disable the game's dynamic range, so even though the darker colors are lighter, at the same time however the lighter colors are now darker, making the graphics look flat and terribly dull. Same with R underscore intensity. This just increases the texture brightness, but textures have a brightness range that cannot be expanded. So even though darker colors will be lighter, lighter colors, however, like pastel blues and yellows that are now overexposed, all blends together into white. And when in shadow, now looks gray. Just leave intensity alone. Keep it at its default level of 1 and don't use ignore HW gamma. Those are just workarounds. What we actually need to do is to fix the bug that is causing this issue in the first place. And that is by correcting the game's dynamic range which has glitched out. Fortunately, there are in fact two command lines that can shift this range to a different level. R underscore over bright bits and R underscore map over bright bits. Now this may be counterintuitive, but what we need to do is lower the default figures by 1. So over bright bits, which defaults to 1, needs to be 0. Press enter to execute, and map over bright bits, which is 2, should be set to 1. Press enter again. These changes will only take effect by restarting the game's renderer by inputting vid underscore restart, press enter. Lowering map over bright bits controls the dynamic range of textures and over bright bits does the same but to everything else. By lowering the number it does make the game even darker but that's just because we have widened the dynamic range which means now we can move the brightness slider even further without bugging out. You can also fine tune this in the console by using R underscore gamma. I like mine set to 1.4, but it really does depend on the monitor or personal preference. Mistake number two, enabling widescreen. Now before anyone jumps to conclusions, I'm not saying you should never use widescreen mode. However, there are some problems related to this as far as vanilla Quake 3 is concerned, and that is 4x3 was standard when this game was made. Therefore, it really isn't very accommodating to, well, anything really that isn't 4x3. It is possible to add literally any modern resolution under the sun by using the R underscore custom width and custom height commands followed by their respective resolution dimensions. Now this just stores it in memory by actually enabling it. You would have to input R underscore mode minus one. With that being said, because 5x4 monitors were also a thing back then, particularly the resolution of 1280 by 1024, which Quake 3 does support, the game will prioritize vertical real estate over the horizontal, which means when you use something like 16x9, the game will crop your vertical field of view rather than widen the horizontal. Now, there is a fix for this. You can just manually increase the game's FOV by using CG underscore FOV. 
90 degrees is the default. So anywhere between 110 or 120 will do the trick. However, even back in the day, many players like to enlarge the FOV when using 4x3 monitors. As a result, the game actually automatically lowers the weapon model to prevent the weapons from taking up too much of the screen when the FOV is increased. This is very considerate of its software because this feature didn't exist in the first two Quake games. So what's the problem? It's not a problem if you don't mind having the guns be almost completely out of frame. Other issues that widescreen causes includes full motion videos not showing at all, the HUD being stretched out, as well as a few other annoyances. If you insist that the sacrifices are worth it, then by all means, go with widescreen, but don't go wider than 16x9. Ultra wide would look even dumber. However, just like how watching a show that was originally shot in 4x3 and then cropped down to 16x9, or worse, playing a 4x3 video distorted to fill that 16x9 aspect ratio, it just looks stupid. This may be a crazy idea, but I would recommend you stick with 4x3. Yeah, but my monitor doesn't have a 4x3 equivalent to 1080p or 1440p, and I don't like using lower resolutions. Actually, if the driver can support it, then your monitor can as well. For instance, if you are using a GeForce graphics card, then you can use the NVIDIA control panel that lets you create custom resolutions, such as the 4x3 equivalent to 1080p, which is 1440 by 1080. Also, make sure that image scaling is set to aspect ratio instead of full screen if your monitor doesn't already do that automatically. Just like how some stuff is optimized for widescreens, others can be a better experience in the original 4x3 aspect ratio, no matter the monitor. Mistake number three, V-Sync and FPS. Quake 3 is an old OpenGL application, and unfortunately, OpenGL for a long time hasn't been very good at reducing input latency with VSync enabled, especially at 60 Hz. Even after disabling triple buffer and turning on the low latency mode in your GPU's driver settings, it won't make much of a difference. Disabling VSync would reduce lag by a very noticeable amount. This is done by either turning VSync off in your driver settings or in the game, type in R underscore swap interval, followed by either a one or a zero. This will turn on or off VSync without needing to exit the game, just as long as your driver gives VSync control to the game. But if you don't like screen tearing, there are several methods of correcting this. But before we go through these, there are three things we need to do. First, we'll need to remove the game's frame limiter because higher frame rates reduces lag. Just punching com underscore max FPS followed by either a number of your choosing or set to zero if you don't want a limit. But even though the game's speed isn't affected by drastic changes in frame rate, the physics on the other hand are. This may result in spontaneous fluctuations in falling speed or how high your jumps will be. Because of this, I would strongly recommend having a limit of 120 FPS. Then head over to your game options and enable sync every frame. This option makes the game run slower because now it has to be more precise to perfectly sync up with the monitor. But since even a potato can run this game just fine, none of us will have to worry about that. And finally, use the command CG underscore draw FPS followed by a one to have the game show an FPS counter so you can see if you were successful in the changes made to the frame limiter and vSync state. All right, so now we're ready to fix the lag. For solution A, in your GPU's driver settings, force enable free sync or G-Sync if your monitor supports it, that is. And if for some reason that doesn't work, then solution B, enable V-Sync, but have the game run on a higher refresh rate, preferably 120 Hz, to match the game's 120 FPS cap. Again, assuming your monitor is able to. Now, the game sometimes will run at a lower refresh rate, and so you'll have to manually import it by typing in R underscore display refresh with the number 120. Zero brings it back to default. But for those that don't have a high refresh rate monitor, for solution C, there is another way of reducing lag by increasing FPS whilst the monitor stays at its native refresh rate, which is usually 60 Hertz. To do so, certain GPU drivers like in the NVIDIA control panel can let you switch the VSync options to fast, which makes the GPU render 
all 120 frames per second, whilst the monitor still only displays 60. So those are the fixes to solutions that some people don't actually know about. Now, there are ways of inputting these commands other than using the command console. For instance, you can make these changes in the q3config file, but instead of backslash, use the word setter followed by a space. Also, don't forget to put the number in between two quotation marks. But many of these commands will already be listed and therefore should be modified instead of adding new ones because this can cause problems when there are two identical commands with conflicting values. There's also a third way and that is by placing commands in an autoexec.cfg text file that you may need to create yourself. This will always override the Q3 config file, which can be annoying if you want to modify a specific command in the Quake3 config file or in the game's command console, only to then have it be undone the next time you start up Quake 3 because that specific command is already listed in the auto exec file, and that file will always have top priority. Both auto exec and the config files should be located in the base Q folder. I hope this helps anyone that is running to these problems. Until next time.